Thank God for tonight, today, and uh, we bless his holy name for the gift of life. How many of us believe the gift of life is the best gift God can ever give to any humanity? You believe that? Are you sure? The gift of life. All right, somewhere October last year, I was praying, going deeper in the things of the Spirit. And the Lord began to show me 2022. And the angel of the Lord picked me up in the Spirit. And I saw trees that were dead coming back to life. Rivers that were dry coming back to life. And the angel of the Lord took me upon a mountain top and said, 2022 is your era of hope. And said, it's going to be a year of return. A year the lost will be found. The brokenhearted will be comforted. Those who are wallowing in pain because of disappointment, God will settle your case for you. Amen. So 2022 is a good year. No matter how you see it, what you hear about it, just settle in peace. It will be a good year. And this morning, I want to lay a good foundation with you. I am told we are happening again tonight, isn't it so? We are, happy, we are coming tonight, we are coming tomorrow and in the evening, I don't know much about that. But listen to me, I want to lay a good foundation for you. I have 15 minutes to spend with you. You can talk about hope and leave Job aside. If you talk of hope, and you don't mention Job, then you are in a different dimension. So I read Job 11 to somebody. And I want you to go with me to verse number 18. Maybe I can add the 19 to it. And help you understand, when we talk of hope, what is it? Unfortunately, when we talk of hope, people are thinking of expectation. Hope is not the same as expectation. And hope is not faith. If God is assuring us of hope, telling us hope for 2022, then the question is, what is hope? Is hope the same as vision? Is it the same as expectation? What is hope? Because if God drops a word unto you and tells you, be hopeful. It's a good year. Something good will happen to you. If God drops that word of encouragement to you, now the question is, what is hope? It is not just about hearing of it. It is about understanding it. Because once you understand the power of hope, there is security upon your life. And security is what each and everybody is looking for in life. You want to be employed because of security. You want to engage yourself in this activity because of security. Everybody wants to be secured. Isn't it so? This is what everybody wants in life. Security. In fact, we want to work with Jesus Christ because of security. So that we don't perish. So life is all about security and this is what hope does. 
according to Job 11, verse 18 and 19. And thou shalt be secure. Because there is what? There is hope. Are you with your Bible? I'm reading from King James. Thou shalt be secure. Because there is hope. So hope brings security. It secures a better life for you. It keeps you in balance. It makes you remain focused in life. This is what hope does. And if you continue, you'll understand that you may even dig around you. And you will rest in safety. This is what hope does. I'm trying to help you understand the energy of hope. The power hope can give unto you. But having heard of this, the question here is, what is hope? Because the only way you can embrace hope is when you understand it. So what is it? I should be hopeful? Okay. I am hopeful, but what is that? And remember the question Mary asked Angel Gabriel. I'm not doubting what God is saying. God is pure. God is holy. Just. But there is a question I need it to be answered. I'm a virgin. I know no man. You just drop the word of the Lord with me saying, I shall conceive a holy thing. His name shall be called Jesus. I'm not doubting it. But I have a question for you, angel. How shall it be? And this is one of the most intelligent questions every human being can ask. I'm not doubting what God is saying, but I want to know how it will happen. Are you with me? How is it going to happen? If God is saying he will bless me with a baby and I need no contact from any man, this is the first I'm hearing this. So how would this happen? I know you are able. You pick the dust of the ground to form Adam. So nobody can challenge your power. But the question here is, how would it happen? Are you going to form another Adam in me? Then the Holy Spirit, through the angel of the Lord, spoke to Mary and said, the Spirit of God shall come upon you and you shall conceive this holy thing. So it is not just about you hearing God wants to do this in your life. That is not enough. You have to understand the word hope. You need to understand it so that you will be able to walk with the power of it. Because I have come to understand one thing. Hope can keep you in suspense if you don't know what to do. And at the end, you may think that God has delayed his promise in your life. So hearing from God is one thing, and knowing what to do with what you hear is another thing. And understanding what you have heard is also one thing altogether. Are you with me? So what is important here is understanding the word hope. Because when last year somewhere... October, I think I was here in October last year, and when I went back, and I was praying, the Lord took me upon the mountaintop and said, this year, 2022, is your year of hope. And when he said that to me, it was so clear in my heart. There was no doubt, no fear, no uncertainty. I understood him perfectly. But a question was left with me to answer, and the question was, what is hope. If God is blessing me with hope, what is it? 
And a lot of people can define hope to mean other stuff. But I took my time to pray to God. I said, I want to understand what hope is. I know hope is not expectation. I know hope is not objective. I know, I know hope is not faith. It's not confidence. It is not assurance. So what is it? Then something dropped in my heart. And since that time, I have been working towards it. Hope is the energy you work with. Listen to me. Hope is the energy, the strength, the force that pushes you in this life when, number one, your mind, number two, your heart, number three, the word you hear come in alignment. Come on. Did somebody hear this? Watch it. When we talk of hope, hope is the alignment of the mind, the alignment of the heart, and the alignment of the word you receive. When these th three things come together, you can be hopeful. If your mind and your heart and the word you have received are not in balance, forget about hope. The reason why people suffer when they hear the word of God and they still don't know what to do with it is simple. Their heart and their mind and the word they have received are not in alignment. Their mind is processing something and their mouth is releasing something else. So there is this strange energy that is happening around them. Because their mind is here, their heart is here, what they have heard is also here. Am I talking to somebody? So when we talk of hope, the energy you draw from the alignment of the mind, of the heart, and the word you have received. So when God speaks to me, that becomes one element. And I need to process it here. And I must conceive it here. And once I'm able to bring the three together, nothing can break my heart. The wind will blow. Storms will rise. But I'll be stable in life. Because what is in my heart, what is on my mind, and what I've heard in my ears are in the same dimension. So you cannot talk about hope if you lose these three. The mind, the heart, and what you've heard. And in my visit this time, I'm going to concentrate on the three. So that when God is talking to you about hope, that 2022 is, a, is your year of hope, you will understand how to use the mind, how to use the heart, and how to use what you hear. Let me repeat. Hope, if it is not well understood, it can make you sick. Hope can make you sick. My Bible says that Hope that is deferred can make people sick in Proverbs. So if you don't know what to do with hope and you are just with God, you may think that your pastor lied to you when he spoke the word of God to you. You may think the Bible has lied to you when you read it yourself. So when we talk of hope, three things are involved here. The mind, the heart, and what you hear. And this is very important for you to understand. 
And today I will touch only on the mind, something small on the mind for you. When God met Joshua and told him, Joshua, Moses is dead now. Take up the mantle of leadership. Lead my people. Take them to the promised land. Make sure you divide it well. God told Joshua something important. Is that this word that I have given to you, I want you to meditate it. Meditate on the word. That is the mind. Meditate on it day and night. But unfortunately, when we talk of meditation, we are only talking about thinking or processing what we have heard. But if you take your time to understand the Hebrew root of meditation, you will understand that we are losing a lot. We talk of meditation, but we actually don't get the strength we, get, we should get from. Simply because meditation is not just about thinking or processing what you have been told. But it is about you forming images of the things that you have heard. So when God says you are pregnant, you just capture. You see yourself as pregnant woman. Hey, are you alive? When we talk of meditation, using the mind in, on the word of the Lord. Now hear me. We are actually talking about you forming images of God's word. When God told you, you can climb up this mountain, you saw the mountain becoming like a plane. So when we talk of meditation, it is not just about you processing it, thinking about it. Thinking is not meditating. And when we talk of meditation, people think of being quiet. Isn't it so? Closing the eyes and being in a quiet mood. So we say meditation. Isn't it so? This is how we see meditation to be. That you should meditate. It means that lock yourself in the room. No noise. Close your eyes. And that is how we see meditation. No place. You can be in a noisy place and still meditate. People can still talk to you and you'll still be in your meditative mood. Because when we talk of meditation, we are talking about forming images of the things you hear. When I'm able to draw pictures for the things he has promised me, that when God said, I am rich and not poor, I just drew the picture of a rich person in my mind. When God said, you are healed, you are not sick, I just drew that picture of a healthy person. When God said, this project will be completed in no time, I just saw in my spirit, we are already in it. So when we talk of meditation, forming a picture of the end result of the things you want to see, So when God spoke to Joshua and said, meditate on my word day and night, God was actually telling Joshua, now look here, I have presented to you my word of promise, which is also sacred. And I want you to form images. You are taking them to the promised land. Now see yourself as already there. Am I talking to somebody? And this is the way to go. The images you form in your heart. The images you form in your spirit man. It speaks volumes. So if the images you are forming. 
are not in alignment with what God has said. That is not meditation. It is the picture of your life today that will form your future. I repeat, the pictures you form for yourself is the future you create for yourself. You can be in any situation as long as you are here. You can be in any situation, but listen to me. You can get out of it. It doesn't matter the magnitude of that issue. You can still get out of it. It's a matter of you understanding what God has done. So I pick the word of Christ. Then I begin to form those images I want. And I begin to process those images. Then you will be able to print it out. So the camera is set on you. And you take the shot. You process it on your machine. And then you print it out. So the printout becomes the reality. That laptop you use is the mind. Now the camera you are using, listen to me, is the images you form. So once I form the images and I process them, I can print them out. So the printout you have is the image you captured. The printout of your life, of the project, of your marriage, of your children, the printout of your relationship is as a result of the images you captured days back. And this is it. So what are you processing in the mind? Very important. You cannot talk about hope if the mind is negative and if the mind is vacant. If the mind is empty, there is no hope. Because hope thrives on objectives. So what are your objectives that you are forming as images in your heart? And this is very important. And each and every child of yours, you have image for that child. And that image you have will be the print out of your tomorrow's life. I saw, I saw Pastor, I met him. When was that? 2018, 2008, sorry. How many years now? In Malaysia, 2008. And when I got to know, this is what he does. And I told him, one day, I'll send somebody. How many years now? And today is the one day. Am I talking to you? Years back I told him. But little did I know. The person I will send will be my own son. When we talk of hope. Hope must have images. It is not just about hearing it. It is about you forming images of them. Take your time and read the Bible. The King James will only say, God spoke to Abraham when Lot was misbehaving and took the better part of the land. And God spoke to Abraham. He said, look up and see around you. 
Wherever your eyes can reach, I have given it to you. Please go home, take your time to understand what God meant when he said, look up and see. And the Hebrew dimension in that will tell you, God said, now you can capture images of where you want to be and they will become your reality. So when God is presenting a promise to you, God wants you to be involved by you making it your own. It is not about the promise coming from the altar. It is not about the man of God speaking the word of God to you. It has nothing to do with what you are receiving. It has everything to do with how you process it. So God can speak to you and the same word you hear can look like a lie. It is not because God has lied. It is because you are not in the position to translate it into reality. Take your time. May I end with this and then it will help you. When you look at Abraham and Sarah, the promise of God to have Isaac took them 25 years. Isn't it so? Abraham was 75, gave birth to Isaac when he was 100. Sarah was 90 when she gave birth to Isaac. So it means she was also 65 when God gave her the word. Now the question is, who delayed the promise? Two people are involved here. Man and his wife. Now God gives them his word and God speaks clearly. Isaac will be born. And this God cannot lie. When he speaks, it happens. Anytime God speaks, he engages himself in his own word. Just to protect the integrity of his name. But why did Abraham have to wait, have to wait for 25 solid years? The problem was not with Abraham. Take your time, read the Bible. I will give you a scripture. The problem is not, wasn't with Abraham. Abraham wasn't impotent. If he was, he wouldn't have given birth to Ishmael. Are you there? Abraham wasn't impotent. Not at all. Because when the promise was delaying, Sarah told Abraham, my Lord, I think this thing is delaying. I give to you my maid. Her name, Hagar. Hagar. Isn't it so? Then he, she gives Hagar to Abraham. And Hagar conceives. So it means Abraham wasn't impotent. And the problem was not with Abraham. Are you catching up? So the problem was actually with the woman. And I remember one of the days when God visited them in Genesis 18. And my Bible says that when God presented the prophecy to them, Sarah was in her kitchen smiling. And she was like, how can this be? And God hears and questions Sarah. Are you laughing? He said, no, my Lord, I'm not. And in Hebrews, the Bible talks about Sarah having hope and faith. And when that happened, she was able to conceive. So two people were involved, but one had issue. 
And the faith of the other could not deliver the faith of the other. Please watch it. I may be walking closely with God, but if I am not in alignment with his word, I will still suffer. His promises will not become a blessing to me. Abraham was already having hope and faith, but Sarah was lacking it. And that faith of Abraham could not deliver his wife. Sarah too had to rise in hope and in faith. So that the faith of the two can produce the Isaac they needed. So God is waking you up from your sleep and saying to you this morning, begin to form images of that which he has promised you. Just begin to see yourself. See yourself from today that I am this person. I am that person. I am who God says I am. Nothing can change it. Circumstances won't change it. Atmosphere won't change it. Environment will not change it. And when you come to this place of understanding, you begin to see what God has said concerning your life. So when we talk of hope, please, we are talking about you walking in the strength, in the power, in the energy of the alignment of your mind, your heart, and the word. So you need the three to come in alignment. And when the three comes in alignment, your mind, your heart, the word, nothing can derail you from the course of life. The three are very important. And when we talk of the mind, we are talking about you understanding the use of the brain. Are you alive? <laughs> now, what is the mind? And I tell people, when we talk of the mind, you don't see the mind, but you see the brain. The mind is your brain at work. Hello. So when we talk of the mind, the mind simply means the brain at work. When you put your brain to use, then it is called the mind. The mind is the spirit of the brain. The brain in action. The brain is just the organ up here. But your mind is not here. In fact, your mind is the totality of your being. I know you did not get that. So when we talk of the mind, now hear this. We are not just talking about the brain. The brain is an organ. You can see it. When your head is open, they can bring it out. That is the brain. It is the machine, the engine, the engine of the mind. So when we talk of renewing the mind, we are not talking about plucking off the brain and placing with another one. No, we are talking about you changing the way you see things. That is the message of repentance. So when Jesus came, repent, it means I change your direction. And look at where I am now showing you. That is repentance. You've been looking at this direction for far too long. And you have always thought that is the way to go. But today I preach the message of repentance to you saying that this is the way. That is repentance. And they all come back to the mind. Which is your brain at work. When God called you to be a Christian, he didn't take your mind from you. And this is what Christians should understand. That Christianity is not a call on to becoming a zombie. 
And this is so unfortunate. And trust me, one of the equities, one of the blessings, natural blessings God, Yahweh Adonai, has given to every Christian is the brain, the mind. Hindus don't have different mind. Krishnas, they don't have a different one. Buddha don't have. Christians, don't, we all have the same, but the way we use ours and the spirit that is guiding us is what matters. So you can be a Krishna, but the person is using the mind. So the natural blessings of this life is affecting the person. And a Christian has failed to use the mind. And they think that everything should just be here. After church closes, what next? When COVID came and churches were asked not to gather, what happened to many Christians? Some fell off. Some are even wishing there is no church service because home is so sweet for them now. Now people want to have church service online at the comfort of their home. And they are so okay with that. So it is not about just coming together. Which of course, yes, coming together can bring a certain amount of strength. But I have come to believe that a child of God can be anywhere and still make some impact. If only you can align your mind, your heart, the word, and bring them together. You synchronize them. The mind is not different from the heart. The heart is not different from what you have heard. And this is the totality of your being. It is not about age. It has nothing to do about tribe, the family you are coming from, or background. It has everything to do with you as a person. You receive the word, you lock up in your heart, and then you send the energy to the brain, you allow the Holy Spirit to now guide you. And this is the way to go, people. You cannot be disadvantaged. And you don't need to live your life at the mercies of this life. You can become a mistress or a master of this life. Only if you can understand this three. And this is how hope thrives. And if you walk in this dimension, nothing in this life can stop you. Because what is in the heart, what is in the, in the mind, and what you have heard, they are all in alignment. So when pastor comes to deliver the message of the Lord, you are already in tune. There is no seed of doubt or fear or anxiety. There is no uncertainty in your heart. You are so sure that this word you have received, the same will happen to you. So you receive the word of God and you begin to process it. When God speaks to you and tells you that this is what I have done, begin to see yourself as such. When Mary received the prophecy of being pregnant, irrespective of her virginity, that you will be pregnant, quickly, Mary took the word and she moved straight to Elizabeth because Elizabeth was already pregnant and she wanted to find her like. God is saying you are blessed, but up here you still see yourself as poor. God is saying you are healed, but because of the lab report you received, you are still saying to yourself, I'm sick, I don't think I can survive. And this is what is happening to you. So somebody and the wife come to me, 
And the doctor tells them that, hey, look here. The final result is out. The lab result is here. You are HIV positive. You and your wife. And they couldn't hold it, crying here and there. So they came to me in my office. We sat down. That is what the doctor said. I said, the doctor said that. I said, yes. He didn't just say it. This is the result. Then I said, okay. I think there's another result we can look into. And they were like, what is this? I said, there's another result. And that result does not come from the doctor. It came from the one that died on the cross. And he told me by his stripes, we are not just healed, but we were. So before the word came, you were already healed. What you are seeing, the devil is trying to make you become afraid. And when the devil sees fear in you, then he punches. So the doctor said it is human being using machines and what have you, but there's a higher report. And I believe in that report. And the Bible says, whose report will you believe? I want to believe the higher report. The one that took my care, my case, my burdens, my troubles, and nailed it on the cross. I want to believe his report. And his report tells me, by his stripes, I was healed. You were healed. We want to challenge God and his word. If God is God, let your blood be cleansed. And as I was talking to them, I heard the word. My blood is still alive. And when I heard that word, I stood up from my, my seat. I said, can I get communion wine? So they served me communion wine. I just laid my hand on it, blessed it, and I told them to drink. They drank it. And I said, give yourself a week, go back. One week they went back to the same hospital, the doctor checked, and no HIV. The doctor waited. You can clap if you want to. Now the doctor checks two weeks, no HIV. One month, one year, two years, three years. Now we are in the tenth year. There is a report higher than what any human being can give you. And this is the report you must believe. And this is how it works. You pick the word of God, process it in your spirit, and form images of those words. Let it become your guide, your inspiration, your energy, your strength. Let it become the air you breathe. This is what he has said. I believe God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change. Has he said it, will he not do it? Every word of promise that comes from God is yea and amen. There is no word that came from God that lied to us. God will not lie to any of his creation. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. His word is forever settled. Bible says the heaven and the earth shall pass away. But his word shall remain the same. Process these words in your spirit. Let it go with you wherever you see yourself to be. Form images of the future you want from today. Form those images. Where do you want to be in life? See it. You are already there. As a matter of fact, you can leave your future from here. If you can align yourself, the mind, the heart, the word of the Lord, and you bring them in alignment, hear me, people, you can still walk into your future from here. One of the things that we don't understand, if you can grow with the Lord and in his word, 
There is no partition, curtains, division between the heaven and the earth. You didn't get that. Let me say it again. When you walk with the Lord and you build your relationship with him to a certain dimension, heaven and the earth will be one. Am I talking to you? You don't need to die before you go to heaven. And the day the Lord took me to heaven and we were speaking, I thought I was dead. Because all this was I thought, that you have to die before you assess heaven. Isn't it so? Most Christians, that's what we think. Die and go to heaven. Now watch this. If Bloom is not your city and your parents are not here and they are somewhere Smithfield, must you die before you go and visit them? No, come on, talk back to me. You are in Bloom, they are in Smithfield, you, you miss them, you want to visit them. What do you do? You program and go. Isn't it so? Why must I die before I go and visit my parents? Think on this. This is the simplest illustration I can give you. So when we talk of visiting heaven, the people must understand that I don't need to die. The connection between me and my father must be that healthy and rich. Now, Revelation chapter 4, Bible says that the spirit of the Lord visited John and told him, come up here and I'll show you things that will happen. And I love Revelation 4 verse 2. The scripture says that immediately I was in the spirit. Oh, come on. Immediately, there was no delay. I was there. Come up, because where my disciples are, that is where I am. And where I am, that is where they will be. Jesus did not promise us a different place. He said, where I am, there you will be. So if I want to visit Jesus, it must not cause me to die. All right. So today, take this with you. Let it be your foundation of hope. Then when we talk of hope, three things are involved. The mind, the heart, the word. And I just touched briefly on the mind. Through the power of meditation. Forming images of what God is saying. Concerning your life, concerning your family, your marriage, your health, your finance, everything that has to do with you. Yes, they saw it under their machine. They were able to detect, to tell you this is the challenge, this is the problem. Yes, that is one aspect of it. But when you took it, what did you do with it? And this is so hard for us to accept it because the reality is showing in your skin, in your body, in your blood, in your bones, in your lungs. It is showing. What the doctor said is actually showing. You, you feel it. You are weak. Yes. But what is God also saying? If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit shall quicken your mortal beings. And if the Bible talks of mortal beings, it is saying that this body can die, but the spirit can bring it back to life. And this is how you must raise your hope. Let it rise within you. What the doctor has said is one thing, but there's a higher report that can override what the doctor has said. And that report is what I believe. And this is the report that comes from Yahweh Adonai. The Lord my God rules and reigns. His word is sure. His word is yea and amen. 
And this is what I go for. God bless you. Thank you.